Hi, welcome to Stories from the Art Room. Today I'd like to share this painting called Perfume, which I completed in 1991 as part of my BA in Fine Art from Coventry School of Art. It was exhibited at the Islington Business Centre in London, where the lecturers used my painting as a centrepiece behind where they they could uh, sit at a, a coffee table promoting their fine arts course. I was told that someone did want to buy perfume but was sadly unable to sort out the transportation of the, a work of this size to their home. The textures of the paint gestures were made to bold and to blur and shimmer at a distance with the lights against dark to radiate across a large space. So my cramped studio space is, is not ideal. The words perfume, scent, aroma, as opposed to stink, pong, reek and stench imply extremes without subtleties in between especially when we know dogs, for example, explore an olfactory universe that is unknown to us. Us humans are a bit snobby about our sense of smell, most probably because we observe other animals' scent marking or smelling each other's bottoms. But how amazing that dogs are used to detect the scent of a body lying underwater in a lake while passing above in a uh, on a motorboat on the surface. It's possible we once had their ability to identify and differentiate a much larger range of odours which has diminished over the millennia. And so now memories recalled suddenly by scents often surprise us. Just think how you can conjure the sharp tang of rain on Newney Lane tarmac or make your mouth water by thinking of the splash of a newly cut lemon. I did have a crazy idea to soak the canvas backing of this painting in the perfume of choice uh, selected by uh, the buyer. Uh, perhaps this wasn't a good idea. Anyway, it's never been done. When conceiving this image, I recall being intrigued by Patrick Siskin's novel, Perfume. However, I must point out my painting is not about murder or horror. Siskin's novel is about the capturing of the scent of a beautiful woman in order that the murderer can wear her body's scent and thereby gain the charisma of her attractiveness. And there is something of a magical alchemy about the production or conjuring of a perfume. This puts me in mind of a documentary about the immune system presented by scientist Robert Winston in which he proposed that if we wash away and replace our body odour with another very different smell we unconsciously send out the wrong signature profile of our immune system. The consequences of disguising the scent of our immune system could result in a disruption in successful connections with others. Very important when looking for a mate or a business partner. Winston explained that a prospective mate needs to have an immune system as different from their partner as possible in order to produce a child with an even stronger immunity to disease. He also said, 
body odour explains why you don't make a connection with a person who you think should make a great friend. The reason being, it could be that your immune system is too similar to theirs. Nature wants women to have closer girlfriends with dissimilar immune systems because if a mother should catch a disease and die, her close friends may survive and care for her children. So when we choose a perfume, it is advisable to get one that closely mimics our own scent. I found that out later that it used to be the practice and maybe still is amongst um, continental aristocrats for daughters of wealthy families to be taken to a perfumer upon their coming of age to have a bespoke perfume customised especially for them. In 2017 I experienced a multi-sensory exhibition that focused on 10 perfumes and their pioneering creators called Perfume at Somerset House in London. If you weren't lucky enough to have seen this exhibition, there is a link available below. The exhibition enabled people to explore the origins of modern perfumery through meeting skilled perfumers and learning about the science behind a fragrance. I found Secret of Scent, Adventures in Perfume and the Science of Smell by Luca Turin at the exhibition. And I especially love Turin's nostalgic reference to Gillain's 1962 version of Chant d'Orem. He wrote, it smells divinely of peachy skin and no other floral lactonic before, during or since hit that exact spot. He says, unfortunately, the formula was messed up and lost some years ago when the accountants took over, thereby putting this glorious perfume permanently out of reach. Turin says, we are now officially at the mercy of uh, waiting for that uh, moment when walking past a flea market stall only to pick up a small sample bottle in a tatty old black and gold box and then stand transfixed. Nevertheless, recently there was this vintage 1962 bottle available online. No idea how much it was though. Turin turned me on to Shalimar and I sneaked into Fortnum Mason's perfumery department for a good dab of it, uh, the perfume that is, as opposed to the Eau de la Toilette. I, I couldn't afford the perfume. I now wear Shalimar exclusively for dancing the tango. That's all for now. Hope you, to see you next time when I will be sharing why I started my Stories from the Art Room channel. So bye until then.